the public hearing for us. Really so it is once I uh, uh, like to call the May eleventh, two thousand fifteen school committee meeting to order. Uh, at first we'll uh, open the uh, public hearing on school choice. Dr. Darney. Yes, yeah, so I I put in uh, the packet the uh, current enrollment, well, not the current, but the projected enrollment for next year uh, for the elementary schools and also projected enrollment for our middle schools and high school. Um, school choice, it's an annual vote that's taken by the, by the school committee. Um, and you can, you can look at school choice different ways. Um, if you have uh, available student slots at certain grade level you could just focus it on that grade level or at a, a particular level uh, like all elementary or all middle or all high school um, as you can see from our numbers and the conversations that we've had this year particularly at the elementary level um, we, we at this time do not have the space available for additional student slots um, anywhere in the district so uh, even though um, it's something I know we've talked about in the past. It's not something that I would recommend that the committee uh, vote in favor of for this year, for next year. So if you do school choice, you have those students for good, correct? They yes, they, yeah. they would remain in the district for as long as they want to stay right. or until they graduate. That is correct. A district does get, um, from a financial standpoint, they do get $5,000 for each student. Um, that they accept for school choice. It would have to be through a lottery. You'd have to come up with a lottery system in terms of selecting the students. You'd have to advertise. So there's a whole process <coughs> that you'd need to follow. Sweat. Thank Actually, you. can you just read the motion? Oh, yeah. Sure. Move pursuant to the provisions of GLC 76 and 12B that the School Committee of Reading, following a public hearing, hereby withdraws from its obligation to enroll non-resident students in Reading Public Schools during the 2015-2016 school year for the following reason, general district enrollment. For a second. 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 Yes. So I don't know why. I thought that in order for students to go to another district that was a choice district, like from our district, that we had to be school choice, but that is not true. No. So a student, any student can go to a school choice district from their home district. Correct. As long as they're accepted in that choice district. Correct. And does the $5,000 transfer from our budget, our money, to the other district? Where does chapter 70. It, so you lose the 5000 Through the Chapter 70, 70 funding, yeah. But where does that, does that show up in our overall budget? I thought I saw a line item on the town budget somewhere. It shows up on the town budget. Yeah. It shows up on the town yeah, budget. Yeah, uh, I believe there's a couple of students. Mm -hmm. As a as a um, mm -hmm. as sort of a charge down or something. I meant to bring my. I was going to bring my. Um, I'd have to look at it on yeah. our end of year report. It shows up on schedule one and on schedule nineteen. And it's basically ends up being it's a it's reduction a against mm -hmm. chapter seventy. It's the chapter seventy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> and so we have a couple students. I believe they're in the virtual. Um, the, on, the online virtual academy, which is considered a school choice. Oh. Homeschooling is cho school choice now. Hmm? Homeschooling is not a school choice. No, it is not. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yes, Jules. So we, I'm, do we only have students virtually, not, have we ever had students from other districts through this program in years past? No, I don't believe, at least in the five years I've been five. in this role, no. Okay. And uh, I should know this, but give me, you know, I'm new. Um, this is separate from METCO. This is separate from totally METCO. Separate yes. From METCO. Okay. Yes, this is, this vote that you take has nothing to do with the METCO program. Okay, thank you. And we currently just, so we have 75 METCO students. How does that affect uh, vocational students that may opt to go elsewhere other than the Northeast Vogue. <laughs> so the, um, that's, that's a good question. So our home folk school is Northeast Folk. Um, if they do not offer a program that a student wants, I have to approve the student to move to another Vogue school. Most students that seek that route go to Minuteman. Right. So I believe that we have five, yes, okay, five. We have five students 
that uh, go to Minuteman, that funding actually comes out of the town budget, not the school budget. What's the cost? Do you know? The tuition for Minuteman, I believe, is like sixteen, seventeen thousand hmm. dollars, which is more than Northeast Folk. Why wouldn't it be? I guess wouldn't doesn't fit under school choice, though. No. 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 Hmm. That's it. Yes. I just an opinion. I am not in favor of making us a school choice district because I think we've struggled and focused hard on trying to get our class sizes towards our goals. And it's not necessarily predictable as to who we still are going to have come in. I already know of a family that's moving into the Birch Meadow District that wouldn't necessarily be on our numbers yet. So if we open ourselves to school choice, then we are going to crowd our classrooms potentially again. And I don't think that's a good idea. And I don't think that the money would be a good reason to um, crowd our classrooms mm -hmm. and we have them ongoing so I think that that jeopardizes the numbers yeah. going forward I'm, yes. I'm, not, I'm not in favor of it but that would it would really if we decided to do it it would only be where we thought there was space. yes you can select so wouldn't really you could select the level it wouldn't be like they could say well we want to go to the fifth grade where we have over you know yeah, it student. would be it would be where the school committee decided <coughs> right. the, the spaces would be. One more question. So, but once we take them in, don't we have to keep them? Yes. Yes. So, then you know you have them for the rest. And potentially, if they want to, they can stay. Of course, they want to. They want to. Any other? Okay. Ready for the vote? Yes. yes. All those in favor? Six zero. Thank you. At this time, we'll have public input. Seeing none. Uh, now we'll have the RISE presentation. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for inviting us. Sort of double-edged thank you. This is my favorite thing to do. <laughs> um, I'm Debbie Butts. I am the RISE preschool director. This is Erica Boren, who um, is in her third successful year here. Rise actually, she took a break. She was a teacher before at the Killam School, right? Mm -hmm. So thank you, Erica, for being here. And I want to thank the school committee and Martha and Craig and Dr. Doherty for being so supportive of the Rise Preschool. Um, it's been a wonderful experience. I said today at interviews that I think I have the best job in town. Definitely, I have the best case manager's job in town, and uh, so I feel really lucky. So we'll give you a little overview of what we do. This is um, some artwork. These are community helpers, just so you know. That's a nurse and a dad. So Rise Preschool begins the public school experience here in Reading, and we're really proud to introduce families to pre-K to grade 12 positive educational experience. Um, it's about the same as last year. We have 132 students, 42 receiving special education services in classrooms, 71 community model students, and 18 receiving um, related services only, and those are by and large speech and language kids that come in. So this is our staff, pretty much the same as last year. One occupational therapist, 1.4 speech and language pathologist, two part-time physical therapists that we share with other schools. We have five full-time teachers, two part-time, a music teacher, 14 para-educators, uh, one part-time secretary, and me. And I don't know how to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of it. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm going to pass this over to Erica about the Massachusetts State Frameworks. Okay. Um, so we follow the Common Core Massachusetts State Frameworks. We have... Um, for preschool, the standards are for our older fours and younger five-year-old students. So when we created our standards-based report card, we looked at what our older fours and younger fives um, needed to do, and so then we kind of worked backwards and said, what do our three fours need to be able to do in their first year of preschool? Um, as Debbie said, we follow the Common Core for reading, writing, speaking, and listening, um, and language for the ELA portion of our curriculum. Um, in terms of mathematics, we have counting and cardinality operations and algebraic thinking, um, as well as measurement, data, uh, and geometry. And we're really laying the foundation skills for our students in Reading at RISE. 
Um, in terms of our STEM, we're get, going to be able to um, hopefully this summer do some more work and kind of delve more into developing some curriculum for our science, uh, technology, engineering, and math. Um, and in terms of our social skills, we have our second step curriculum. Um, which we've been using for a number of years now. Um, that this is a series of 26 lessons that really helps to develop students' um, social skills in terms of what, um, how they think about their peers, ways to deal with, um, how to deal with troubling situations, how to problem solve, um, self-talk, all these things that kind of before we used to kind of just expect kids to do and that we actually need to explicitly teach all of our students how to you know have these self-help skills um, to kind of rewind last summer we had the opportunity to do some ela curriculum work i think it did kind of our year one um, curriculum and we were fortunate enough to be able to purchase um, some books we really put a focus um, on non-fiction um, for the common core as it is throughout um, the common core and we have brought that down to preschool so we're able to get kind of some really fun um, like fall books and talk about the life cycle of a pumpkin um, this was an absolute an absolute hit <coughs> preschool bless you this year um, the emperor's egg um, so it's nonfiction, but even within the nonfiction, we're able to kind of focus on text features. Um, research has shown that when students are um, brought, the attention, their attention is brought to specific text features like the different size of print on a page, that their awareness of the print goes up by like 200,000%, that they're really able to capture that. And this is a great example because it has large size text, small size text, on the page and then even as you continue to go through it alternates so that we're really trying to build um, our students a print awareness in preschool uh, the other thing that's been wonderful about having these books as a resource is that it has allowed us to be able to do small book groups with our kids so typically in preschool prior to that we would have to do you know a whole class read so now we have the opportunity to do a whole class read and then to do a second reading with small groups or for our kids who need that previewing of vocabulary we're able to really build that in for them a lot more um, so we've been able to purchase a range so this was the emperor's egg we've got um, <coughs> books for like for dental health and in doing this ela work we were also able to kind of um, update our units um, you know we it didn't before we didn't really incorporate dental health we were able to do that we have new units for construction and for community <coughs> this year as well um, this is a great you know Todd par you know bringing nonfiction into the classroom in a really fun way with lots of bright vibrant colors um, in even for you know we have something for June right as we're heading there to the beach um, another thing that we were able to do while we were purchasing and looking for these books um, <coughs> this is the book listening lock and we're able to kind of, um, there's some automatopoeia in this book. So even at the preschool level, we're able to kind of develop students' writing skills and build their awareness of the craft. Oh, <laughs> My Fitbit's going off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so be able to do that for our preschoolers. And it's really exciting what we've been able to see, um, being able to use these as a resource. And our hope is that this summer that we're able to kind of explore um, year two some more. We have some themes that overlap, but also some different themes like um, space, um, that just as an example of what we're going to work on for this summer. Did I hit everything? You did. Great. Right. Don't you wish you had that in preschool? <laughs> yeah. You're a great writer now if you had all that stuff. You probably are already a good writer. Um, the big focus in, in the town is this MTSS initiative. And we've really gone by storm here at Rise Preschool. It's really what we do anyway. Um, this is a big matrix that we created last year. We're actually this year going to simplify it because we've found that it's really, uh, we're duplicating lessons all the time. We do teach systematically um, behaviors in every setting, but um, we're fully involved and the lessons have been taught and we do it every single day. And I've got some great examples. I hope this works.
So that's just the, those. That's the Rise Preschool Four Big Rules, and one of our teachers wrote that song. She's very talented. I have three videos for you to watch because they really are. Um, they really show exactly what we do when we're three, four, and five. All the classes sing this. They're all really good at it. They know all the words and they actually uh, do everything they're supposed to do. This one I have to say, I had the tape about 10 times. This is the best we could do. It's not, I really wanted to show you one that was really bad because they don't do anything that they're singing about. But um, no, they're like bumping into each other and pushing. Oh my word, it's a little <laughs> embarrassing, but um, they really can do a good job, and they do for the most part. If I did Mrs. Jo Miss Joyce's class, you would not see them even blink, because um, they're all so regimented. But we're doing this at every, at every turn of the, in the preschool, working on our social skills and following the rules and raising behavioral expectations, because uh, when we get to high school, we don't want to have any office referrals. We want to handle them all in the classroom. <laughs> So when kids are, kids are recognized for their good work, and this, there's a uh, wall of recognition down the hall, you're certainly welcome. Um, if you behave really well, you might even get a ticket when you come. <laughs> but this is the, these are the effort tickets, safety, inclusion, and respect. And when students are recognized for um, exemplary behavior, sometimes they're given a ticket and then they can go and put their name and their ticket out in the hallway. And you can see it's harder. Effort's really, it's an easy one to see. The other ones aren't quite as easy. Um, so. Everybody loves them. Pass that over to you. So um, in terms of predictors of academic success, I had mentioned before in talking about curriculum that we're laying that foundation for our students in Reading at RISE. And according to the National um, Reading Panel, <coughs> that, you know, students really must learn to read by third grade. And that begins with us in terms of being able to build their oral language, the alphabetical code, and the print awareness, as I mentioned in the books that we have now. Um, it's really exciting for us to be able to have those resources to build these things for our students. Um, and all of these literacy components that we're developing, and even in terms of the math, um, they're all linked to the later learning and to reading, as well as to academic success. So we really want to develop that alphabet awareness, the letters and the keywords and the sounds, and it's amazing you know, what we're able to do, that students are able to have that familiarity with foundations in preschool so that they already have that language and the terminology um, in terms of being familiar with the letters and the keywords, as well as um, you know, the skyline for how we write letters, the skyline, the plain line, the grass line, and the worm line, that they already, they're familiar with those terms already. Right, mm -hmm. and we're gonna, in the interest of time, we're gonna fly through these rest, the rest of these pictures. Um, just give you some ideas of what we do with the curriculum. This is actually um, the librarian from the public library, and she came in for Read Across America Day. She did an awesome job. Um, and as I had mentioned earlier, the social skills and play, you know, we're incorporating social skills in everything that we do, in all aspects of the day, not just outside, but in the classroom during choice time, during our center time activities, even during circle time. And again, we're hoping and we, we like to see, and we do see um, through the repetition of our second step social, um, second step social emotional program, that students are able to invite a friend to play, that they're able to trade, that they know the fair ways to play, that we can share, that we can take turns, that we can trade, they know how to wait for a turn. So we're explicitly teaching these skills for our students. Math and social skills. Oh, this is really cute. I'm sorry to make you listen to another one, but. This is part of 
part of circle. It's, it's part of every day in every classroom where they're doing the weather. But this isn't a substantially separate classroom. And this little person never said boo. I mean, he was always really quiet. And just recently, he's become quite verbal and quite animated. So I had to show him to you. <laughs> we just had science, uh, science today in one of the classrooms. They're doing flowers. And this young man built a flower out of box, science and technology, engineering. I had to do this one because this is a non, one of our nonfiction books. It's one of the most popular books. And you probably can't tell as well here as I can. Um, there's a baby bird here, the baby penguin, and here's the mother penguin, and she's throwing up. And that is everybody, all of the kids, that's what they remember most from the book, is that that's how the mommy penguin feeds the baby penguin. And you ask any kid in the Rise Preschool, they will tell you that, or they will tell you that the daddy penguin sits on the eggs. Those are the things that they remember, the, fact, the science facts. <laughs> So I had to show you that one because I think it's so good. SAT question someday. Someday. <laughs> this was from Mother's Day. Give mommy oh. flowers. <laughs> oh, I loved that. Isn't that the cutest? That's Janelle Booten's little girl. She's uh, one of our teachers. Writing where they let them spell it wrong. I don't know if you can see who that is. Dr. Doherty. <laughs> I know it's the only time. He doesn't ever show pictures of himself, so we do it. And then we go to kindergarten. These are three little people that are going to graduate this year, and they are all going to a program um, in the fall. They have all made remarkable strides, and they're ready for kindergarten in Birch Meadow. Wow. And that's it. Nice job. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have a question on the that slide you showed that had uh, uh, effort, respect, yes, uh, inclusion, and I can't remember what the yeah. safety. Safety. So, what would be, I mean? We, as you indicated, effort is something that you see a lot of. What, what would be an example of when someone got a badge for inclusion, or well, maybe when you can invite, so inviting a friend to play. Um, you know, sometimes that, especially um, in some cases, we have boys that want to play with boys and that girls want to play with girls and that, you know, you can't play. Um, sometimes that an opportunity to give an inclusion ticket would be, you know what, you invited a friend to play or that friend asked if they could join your play and you said yes, that you included them. That's, what, that's how I would look at that one. Mm -hmm. Yes. What kind of connection do you have with parents that will help them understand what you're trying to do and how? One of my concerns is that our kids sometimes are being encouraged to grow up so fast, and um, there's a lot of comparison of what Johnny or Jane ought to be able to do now, and so parents, we can get worried about whether we're in the right place or our kids are in the right place, and how do you communicate breathing and giving kids developmental space? Um, so I actually send home a daily email every day to my family so that they know exactly what we've done. Um, they know the letter that we've covered, the sound, they know the story that we've read, um, they, they know the center activities that we've done um, as a way to try to promote that homeschool connection because preschoolers are very much in the moment and once they walk out that door, literally by the time I say, bye, I'll see you tomorrow, it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> you know. And so I've had a lot of positive feedback from families, and I've done this for the past couple of years, that they're able to talk with their children and to have these conversations at home and to be able to extend that learning. Certainly in terms of, you know, in terms of be children being where they need to be, we have our standards. Um, you know, we do have conference, you know, we have our conference time and we have our progress reports that we do in January as well as in June. And we really all try to have an open door policy so that parents are able to, you know, reach out to us if they have questions or concerns at any time. But we're also really lucky too at the preschool level because we pretty much see the parents at drop off and at pick up. So we're able to have a lot of, you know, kind of on the side conversations and that if there's a concern we can kind of address it right away. So I feel really lucky that we're able to do that. Um, and certainly, you know, email, and we're available, and we, we really communicate chats to the parents. As a parent, you know, that's really important to me as well, and so I always try to look at how would I want 
you know, my ch children's teachers to be in, to be able to communicate with that. Um, but we also talk about how kids are who they are and that it's our job to kind of teach them, get them where they are, and to be able to bring them to that, that next level. And by providing families with these daily dose, I call them the daily dose, um, you know, that they're able to be able to extend the skills, especially for our students in my classroom because I have them three, three days a week for two and a half hours. That's not a lot of time. Um, and we're really fortunate in Reading that so many families are so involved and that they want to be able to extend their children's learning at home. But we do make a huge effort mm -hmm. to tell people that everybody's different, everybody learns at a different pace, and we do an awful lot of learning through play. Mm -hmm. uh, to many people it doesn't look like that you're doing very much, but children are learning tremendous things when they're play and um, the social skills that they develop. So uh, we do make a huge effort to try not to compare students, and to admit that the Common Core is challenging. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you. Yes. So, um, very nice job, very impressive. Um, one question I do have is, uh, many years ago, I actually had, I was the physical education teacher for the Rise Preschool, I actually had Elaine's boys. What do they have now for physical education or physical activity? Well, at the Wood End School, they actually have PE. We have two classrooms over there. Next year, we'll probably have three. Mm -hmm. They'll actually get PE. Um, at the Rise Preschool, at the high school, we do not have that. Um, but we have lots of opportunities to be outside. Um, we have space outside. If we need, we don't have organized games like you do in physical education. But the students do use the lobby out in front of the, um, the gym in the winter. And the teachers do organized games. Um, but it is not an area that uh, we have access to as much at the high school. Yeah, it was a, it was a challenge actually teaching it here because we didn't really have a, a great facility. It was actually done probably in a space similar to what we have right here in between the tables. That's where we have music now. So, well the music frameworks are very similar to the physical education framework, so is there movement going on in the, the music classes? Yep. The music. We do. Who is the music teacher now? Her name's Sam Prindeville, and she does a wonderful job with our preschoolers. Oh, no. Okay. We also try to incorporate a lot of movement during the day, too, just as part of kids need to be active. They, you know, especially preschoolers, mm -hmm. you know, even for me, take it up. You know, we have, we have our circle time when we're up, you know, three or four times. We're up when we're saying the alphabet, and, you know, I have special sticks where kids you know, we'll pick this, you know, pick a particular stick and, you know, we'll do a visualization exercise. Um, you know, I want you to close your eyes, pretend that you're at a park and you're at a baseball field and you can see the diamond. Okay, now we're going to pretend that we're the pitchers and then we, you know, pretend that we're pitching as we say the alphabet. Um, you know, we do kind of fun things like that when we're counting too. So we try to make, you know, the learning active throughout Good. the preschool Cause, day. Good, because the research behind it is, is really strong. Mm -hmm. um, the benefits of physical activity in terms of, uh, you know, brain development. Absolutely. And then one other question too, um, Second Step's a great program, I'm very familiar with it, but I know that most of the elementary schools, don't they all use Open Circle? Use or open Circle. Open so Circle's not available at preschool. Okay, that's, that's what I was asking. I've called the Stone Center a couple times, I've offered to be the pilot place if they want to try it out at preschool. You would um, think it would they be. They haven't designed it yet. Yeah, no, Second Step's a great program, mm -hmm. but I was it just is. curious if Open Circle did have, so. But great job with Second Step, it's excellent. Thank you. We love it. We do. So I, a lot of success with it. Yep. Just as a follow on this other question, just as a follow I'm just curious, uh, and maybe it has to do with the level of why would Wood End students be getting PE and not over here? Because they're in an elementary school, it's already set up, and, and uh, Joanne King is a wonderfully inclusive principal and has tried to figure out a way to fit in a half hour for our, our little ones over there. It's just out of the goodness of her heart. We, we don't have the staffing to be able to come over here to provide the PE. Any other questions? Yes. I just wanted to say I had the good fortune to actually read in Ms. Boren's class, and I had a blast. And I saw this actually in action, where the kids, the music and the activity really helped them focus and transition from one activity to another. It was really very magical, actually. Thank you. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Nice. See you next year. <laughs> Excellent, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So big it makes you just about cry. <laughs>
Martha, you ready to go with? Is it, is it all Martha? <laughs> I, I am. You can see I have a. Uh, yeah, no, Craig, I'm not seeing. update and the budget update. I do. I think oh, that's for you. Craig's gonna. Craig's singing now. Here's the modular. Here's the modular. Barrow is eating and kill him. Make a little modular song. Yeah, I'm not that creative. It's just hiding. Glasses. Oops, sorry. Not big enough. I don't know that I made enough. No, there's more. Okay. Is it just one? I think. I think so. Yeah. Just one document. Yeah. Yeah. There's just one module. So um, what I've uh, just handed out for you for your review is the, um, the site plans from PAR. So just to give some, um, some perspective on, on where the modulars are actually going. So um, the first one, um, the first page there is the, the Barrows Elementary School. And so um, as you can see, the modular, the plan for the modular is to go on the hot top um, in the back of the building. There does need to be a 10-foot um, variance from the modular to where it slopes down. Um, you can also see um, kind of the trenching. Um, there's trenching to the school for um, the electric line and the proposed water line. And then there's trenching that goes um, along to connect for the sewer. So these were all the designs that were, um, that were done by PAR to help us determine the most ideal, um, the optimal location for the units. The um, they're not going to be gas. Oh, okay. They're just a little bit electric. They're going to be electric. The only one that I think potentially could be gas still is um, Barrows, is Barrows oh, okay. because of the proximity to the gas mm -hmm. line. Thank you. I, I just had a question about the trenching. Can you explain what that will look like ultimately? Or is it underground, or is it? It's they're going to have to dig to, to submerge the the conduits to yeah. connect for the electricity. But then the ultimately, system. it's offline over. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I just wanted yeah. to get yeah. that clarified. Thank um, you. And and just to that point, it's a good question. Thank you. Um, this all starts. The site work starts right after Memorial Day, um, which we have had initial conversations with the building principals, mm -hmm. and um, there are some communications that will happen with parents and the communities as well. Tomorrow. Sorry. Yes, tomorrow. <laughs> so, so, Martha, mm -hmm. uh, weren't any of these lines when we had the portable there before? Weren't those lines already in place? I mean, it's in the relative same area. No, Why? it's not. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure. Any well, you, that. Are you talking about for Barrows? Yeah. Barrows, Barrows was in the, where over. the current staff parking lot yeah. is. Over more. Yeah. yeah like on the other side of the building, actually. Yeah. I think for the Eaton one, I do believe that they're tying in where the Eaton one was before. That, that is correct. Yeah. Yes. Josh Wheaton, it is it is an existing. But I don't want to rush to Eaton. Are there more questions on, on Barrows? It's just too. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to say it's too bad that it's taken up so much of the playground. I mean, there's other, no other real option, but that, that it's just a shame. That was going to be my comment. I was just wondering, so now what happens to the outside time and space for the kids for the last month of school when would be the time that they need it the most <laughs> so they can still there's a whole field yeah, yeah. down below there's basketball court there's a tennis court there, okay so they still um, go down there yeah okay the, what and I didn't know if you were going to get into this piece or not mm -hmm. but to, to answer your question um, this is an area that's going to be pretty much fenced off during from Memorial Day on and this is the communication that we're going to be sending out to parents, and each principal is going to be de designing their own plan on, you know, how students are going to get access to outside. There are some there are some schools where potentially they may not be using the actual, in Barrows's case, the hot top, um, in Killam's case, potentially the playground, because um, where the the modules That's are going at Killam are right next to the yeah. playground, mm -hmm. um, and Eaton potentially also, um, but it's four weeks, and it. If we don't start it before school ends, it's not going to be finished before, before school, school starts. starts, and that's obviously the, the goal. Mm -hmm. I, I was just more commenting that it was, you know, it's going to be there long term. You know, right. I, I understood that, 
you know, it's going to be a, a little bit of a challenge, obviously, but it's necessary to to uh, make it happen before school starts. But it's just too bad because that was a, a pretty good playground for uh, students and more about the winter than anything else. Because you're, you're right, John, there's all kinds of space there during the good weather, but during the, uh, the winter, that's the only location. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge. But it is what it is. Um, for Eaton, um, they're going to go on the, the the front, I guess the, the back or the front, depending on how you're looking at it, side of the building, um, closest to the library egress, right? The mm -hmm. library's on that it's side. It's the library, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and to your question earlier, Mr. Robinson, these do trench to where the, the original hookup was before. And, and as you can see, um, one of the conversations that I had with, um, with John Fudo for the Recreation Department was the impact this is going to have to the, um, uh, the parking lot, but also access to that baseball field, which is actively used all summer long. And so we're going to look into what opportunities are available to keep um, a, a footpath, if you will, depending on how the fencing goes, so that there can still be access, so that um, we won't force these cars for these baseball games into the neighborhood streets. Um, we'll do our best to, to see what we can accommodate with regard to, to continuing to have access to the fields from the, the parking lot because I, I understand from John Fudo that that is the the desired parking lot if your children are playing on that and I don't know the name of that field I'm Joshua that. Eaton Field oh is it the Eaton Field yeah. oh so this is the whole so part the, the whole parking lot is is right way here, over right? here yeah this is somewhere up here so da if you look at the when you're looking at the photo where the portable buildings go there's a there's a small set of stairs that go down to the this is basically the outfield, the left field of that baseball diamond. Oops, here. But is the parking? Excuse me, sorry. Yes. So is the parking behind just the open during the yeah. 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 Okay. the stone? So you're just saying the the the, 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 the yeah, staff parking on the Yes, yeah. that will be open. So it's where people park. Yes. Playground. This is the hot top. Yeah. It's going to be affected. Okay. And so you're talking about sort of access, maybe while, pedestrian access even to, to the, the far field. left okay. between the We're fence line and, and where they're going to be trenching. So that there's still some sort of access okay. from there down to the, to the, the ball field. This kind of goes to Ms. Uh, uh, Joyce's question. So if they don't have access to the playground, where there must be other outdoor space that they can access during the four weeks. Yeah, there's plenty. Or is that a plan that's still in the works? It's a plan that's still in the works. Each school is going to have to address this differently. It, it is potentially, I mean, they, it's going to be limited okay. because of the access. It's not the field itself because the field will be there. Right. It's getting to the field yeah. okay. that's going to be the issue. There's a baseball diamond here, and then there's one way down. There's plenty yes. of field oh, yeah. space yeah. there. Well, the, the building, if you're familiar with Eaton, where the, the proposed site is, is where the funnel ball is. Yeah. 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 So. There's a field here. I think it'll point here. Yeah. Yeah, Martha, I don't think, I mean, I don't think this affects the parking at all. It doesn't affect yeah. the parking. Potentially, it could affect the, the egress, if egress. you will, from the parking lot to, to the, the ball field. field. Yeah. Okay. That, that's, that's what we're trying that's to that's minimize. Okay. We're trying to minimize to having people have to walk all the way up to Summer Ave and all the way around to get to the ball fields. We'd, we'd like oh, to be able to keep. Which would then encourage them to park on, on Summer street, Ave and the side streets rather yes. than the parking right. lot. Yes. I get it. Sorry if I wasn't clear on that. Yeah. We're trying to make sure that we can maintain some sort of footpath to the far left here of the construction site, if you will, to allow mm -hmm. for parents to continue to park in that parking lot and still have access down below to that field. Because this is, the, the other project that's going to be going on in Eaton over the summer is there's a full roof replacement that's going to be happening as well. So I think, um, you know, some further conversations with the rec department about how actively they are going to use that field might be in order. But there's going to be a lot going on in Eaton over the summer. Well, then speaking to that as well, being a Joshua Eaton parent, and I'm sure the principal is going to come up with a plan, a lot of the children um, before and after school, that's how they access they the school. They walk. Through the they field. walk through the <coughs> fields, uh, so that's a that traffic pattern for you know, children walking will be something will have to be addressed. At, at, at Barrows as well, so a lot of children walk and have those stairs. So I think that's part of the each each building yeah. principal is going to tailor their communication to address um, what needs to change over the course of the last four weeks of the school year. Okay. 
Um, and then Killam, um, the Killam site is uh, at the back of the building closest to Haverhill Street. Um, and as Dr. Doherty mentioned, it is uh, located right next to the, the existing playground structure. Um, so there may be limited access to that structure, but certainly they will still have the ability to access those fields. And my understanding, and I haven't confirmed this, but I, I believe this to be the case, is the, the renovation or the, the improvement for the fields isn't scheduled to start until school closes. I don't believe that they're, they're going to be re, regrading the fields or yeah, there's some project that engineering is doing on the fields at Killam. But I believe that that does not start until school closes. Yeah, so you're just, yes. you're just saying they may not end up having access to the playground equipment, but there's another, there's still swings, there's still another set of playground equipment cl closer to Havel Street on that side. Uh, is it still there? I, thought I don't was, think that's still there. I don't still think there. that's there anymore. I don't think it's there. They have, but they no. will have access to all so of the, the fields. Whole field. And there's yes. a lot of paved area. There's a lot of yes. paved area to the other side, yeah. yeah. So there's a lot here. of other. From a, uh, what, what is getting affected at Killam is the basketball court. court. Because oh. that's essentially where the basketball court is, where the module is going. I think the other here. thing is yeah. also it's probably going to impact access around the building a lot. Of talk, you know, that the principals will address those sort of we walking paths right. <coughs> in terms of how people come and go around the building to the back to get to the classrooms or whatever. So it's going to probably impact that because they might not be able to pass along this. Potentially, I, I don't believe, and 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 Mrs. Giles would know better than I, but I don't believe there's a lot of cutting through on this side. I believe that this whole side of this is fenced. a fence line. It's all fenced in. Yeah. Yeah, along the line, but people walk around the building they, to get to. Oh, by the kindergarten. They, come, they access and go by the kindergarten to get to the classrooms in the back. Oh, OK. And I'm just saying that so they may have to, for a few weeks, alternate that. But you're mm -hmm. saying that, so the building principals are, do they, do they have a clear plan of where the fencing is going to be? No, now? we have, we there? have not had our first construction meeting yet. So okay. once in once, once that happens, that, yeah, they will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it'll take a little time to make sure they know where that is and then develop the alternatives. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. This might be a um, a question that doesn't have a really good answer, but with them starting. Um, are they t thinking about the noise factor and the dust factor if it's hot and the windows are open? Is there a way to mitigate that? Or, I mean, are they going to be blasting through pavement while the kids are in school? Or can um, that happen on weekends? Or Well, we're not allowed to do construction projects on Sunday in the town of Reading. So, mm -hmm. And it can only be done during certain hours of the during day. The, of the day. So, on Saturday. Um, yeah, on Saturday. And, and so um, it's something we will bring up at the construction. Yeah. Thank Plus you. The, you don't want to pay overtime on something. Yeah. It's, no. No. We we have a little bit of flexibility, but I mean we. Yeah. Realities. Um, the fourth page. <laughs> seeing no more questions, is uh, is a rendition, uh, a current rendition of what it looks like. The fourth and, and the last page. Um, we have gone with the um, the kind of reddish exterior to try and have them blend in with the brick buildings in terms of visually um, for the neighborhood. Um, we have gone back to them to talk to them about the size of the windows. Um, unfortunately, we their designer was on vacation last week and got back today, so I didn't get an updated schematic. We have been looking at schematics for location of bathrooms and staff bathroom. Um, a, a cut through door on the mating wall and um, and another uh, point of egress so that there's more than one way to get in and out of them um, but we I, unfortunately I, I checked my email prior to this meeting and I, I didn't have the updated one so um, we'll try and provide that to you for the next meeting I'm sure but uh, this is a, an early rendition of what they're going to look like and, excuse me Martha will you remind me how many students in each modular um, I think their capacity is about 20. A uh, 20 per per classroom. Per classroom. 20 to yeah, 22 max. But I think they'll be about right now. I think they'll be 20. Yes. So in terms of the um, design, you, you mentioned the windows. The assume someone from either the contractor or our the, the, the designers our work with our building inspector, our local code, ensure that the height of the windows off the floors are correct and there's all you know the, the um, specifications for window height mm -hmm. and um, 
size well, the, and everything. Well, Vanguard is an approved modular construction for the state of Massachusetts. Okay, so, so they, they are should be fully aware, aware. aware and compliant of mm -hmm. the mass codes. Which yep. are yes. Okay. So they, they must. 20. They must. <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just. It's, it's, 20. it's 20 students. Uh, so they must get. I mean, when I look at this picture, I think anybody, any town that's looking at this, the first question they're going to have is the windows. I mean, mm -hmm. these look like office trailers, not uh, classroom. They, I would think they have other. And and window. Yeah. This. There's different ways to look at this. Part of it is. We also have to look in from the, from the inside out because you want to make sure that teachers have a lot of wall space inside to put hang things up, particularly in a kindergarten classroom, and that you have teaching surfaces. So it's a fine line between ambient light coming in mm -hmm. and having teaching surfaces on the inside. Okay. Are there any? Yes. Sorry. Are there any skylights or uh, not? Not that open, but light. You know, to to use a basically a rooftop window. Those are options or not? No, I I there aren't any in the design. Probably no. add cost. Yeah. 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 I'm also wondering. I'm noticing it's a flat roof, which I know Killam has a flat roof, but we had a lot of snow. So a lot of flat roofs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we have a lot of flat roofs. High school, oh, Killam. We have a lot of flat <laughs> roofs in the district. I know. So is it possible to shovel off of this roof? Is it strong enough? Is it again? It will that? meet all code. So in terms of a snow load, we'll have to determine what it is. And, and as we do with all of our buildings, if, if we're concerned about the snow load on the building, then we'll have someone go up and start removing the snow. So, Do they have, oh, yes, yes. Do they have options for um, slanted roof on these modulars it, or not? I, again, the, this was the design that they submitted to us as part of their bid response that met our financial criteria. So right. there's not a, there's some tweaking certainly that we'll yeah. be able to do, but there's not a lot I, at this point now. If you start adding things, it's going to cost more money. We only have two thousand dollars. Yes. Um, something I'd like to learn a little bit more about, but maybe not tonight. Maybe just after your first construction meeting, are the safety features of the modular. So do the doors lock automatically? That may actually get into the why the windows are the size they are, mm. that you don't want someone being able to walk by and necessarily mm. see. Um, so just all of the ways that the modulars um, keep the students and staff safe. I'd like a little bit more information about that. Sure. Thanks. I, I do know that Question. part of the, the design is to have it tie into the fire alarm system at the school. And so one of the things that we're working on is to make it, to tie it in, but also to have it be somewhat independent. So if there's a, if there's a fire alarm in this, that the Barrows Elementary School doesn't have to empty out, just the portable does. And simi uh, similarly, if there's a fire alarm at Barrows, this might not have to empty out, just the Barrows building does. If, obviously, if it's a fire alarm for the district at the beginning of the year where we have all of our fire drills, each school will have to, or each you know classroom, every classroom will have to empty out. But but there, uh, to your point, I, I will get a list and, and we'll be able to talk more about that at a later date. That'd be great, thanks. But just to give you an example, that that's one example of where mm -hmm. they're going to be on the same system, but they'll have some independence from each other. Any other questions? Yes. Just a comment. I really like the red. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, red schoolhouse. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> thank you, Martha. Oh, you're welcome. Thank yeah. you. We'll have more for you uh, at a later meeting. Do you want to do the budget it, update? Sure, we can do that next. <clears throat> so included in your packet um, is a, uh, a an updated FY15 <coughs> budget. Um, I thought I brought in my notes and I did not, so I will speak from memory. <laughs> um, it has changed uh, a little bit since last time. Uh, since March, we have you know more visibility now going into the last um, the last weeks of the school year. Um, one of the biggest changes uh, was at, at uh, Killam Elementary School. We've had a number of uh, teachers who've been on a, a paid leave, a maternity leave, but they are extending and they're going to transition to an unpaid so there's some savings so there are more cost savings that have occurred now that we're closer to the end of the year I feel more comfortable forecasting that that is going to be an actual savings um, I don't know if there are any specific questions about the budget update 
Yes, Ms. Barowski. I had a couple. One was on the memo. The memo says it's the budget as of April 30th, and the spreadsheet says March 31st. Um, oh, dear. That's totally fine. This it's is not the right spreadsheet. <laughs> I'm not sure how that happened. Because oh. the numbers on the memo don't agree to the spreadsheet. So the, the memo is correct, but the, the spreadsheet memo is was correct. The last month. Oh. Yeah. Okay. This is March 31st oh, yeah, so spreadsheet. April 2nd. Okay. Yeah. Um, I apologize for that. Um, if you want to take a five-minute break, I can print out the right one. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Really a good idea. Okay. Well, we can I, continue I, on to the other things. Yeah. If you want while we're yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Can I ask a question? I'm not sure how that happened. Yes. Dr. Darn, I'm just wondering, um, when will we have an opportunity to see the auditor's report? We were audited, correct? We re recently audited. Okay. I, could, I could maybe speak to that. Yeah. Is that okay? Yes. Um, the audit committee, which I'm, uh, and you are as well, right, Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Robinson and I are the school committee representatives <coughs> to the audit committee, and we meet on Wednesday evening. Oh, okay. So I'm thinking we're going to get the audit report I think you're at getting that meeting. A report oh, okay. And then I always, and then you'll we report. always come back and report Okay. Back. You're talking about the town audit report. Um, it was a town audit report that was done. Right, but we were audited ourselves, right? No, as a town, they, they looked at, I believe the focus was on all of the revolving accounts. Right, right. That's what that I was, was the about. town and the schools. It wasn't, right. just the, yeah. it wasn't just the schools. Yeah, so that was what I was yeah. refer referring to, was looking at the revolving account audit. Yeah, the meeting, that, and that's the, the I forget okay, who's on the audit committee, that. but the town accountant is there. There's a member okay. of the Board of Selectmen, FinCom. Chuck and I represent the school committee, so we'll all go and go through the management okay. letter and the audit and the report back. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Oh, okay. And that will most likely that happen sense. next Monday night. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, what will happen next Monday night? The report. The report back. Oh, yes. Okay, great. Thanks. Friends and Family Day is still on there. I was hoping it would fall off the <laughs> agenda. But. I thought Ka was taking care of that myself. Uh, I, w I will say I was curious as I was going through it. I thought, well, what have you done in the past? Yeah. And do, like, do people in the community come up and have it's, questions? It's really a meet and greet. Mm -hmm. um, we have a tent. Um, there's actually several tents that are set up. We usually uh, next to the Board of Selectmen. And um, people come by and they ask questions. And wasn't there a superintendent's and... dunking tank one year? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that like was September. the fall street yeah. fair. <laughs> so I was thinking, uh, with uh, is it possible to get uh, the architect or whoever was it the architects to to, to do, do some whiteboards with this stuff that we can? Yeah, we could. Uh, Joe, that's a good idea. Yeah, not a good. Not too detailed, but sort of a block diagram yeah, okay. type. Good idea. We actually may know, well, we will know the, well, will matter at that point. Will school, school won't school, be out here. Yeah, I'm just uh, thinking. That will, school will still be in session. But they'll obviously know the uh, travel routes at that point yeah. for safety. We need a couple more. We need three more. Never mind. All right, we'll table <laughs> that and go back to Yeah, it. so the, the, the big thing that has to happen is you just have to come up with shifts mm. on who's going to be in each shift. I think it goes from 11 to 3. Yep. It's going to take two. So there's not a lot of setup, so it would be hour and a half shifts. Mm. And we can go to Caruso's garage to get the tent? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say to get something else. <laughs> uh so, Linda, can you just send out an email with the sign up and thank you? Did you have? I, I'm just wondering when I was thinking about this, I was trying to think of what might facilitate parents being able to ask questions while they're visiting friends and family days with their little ones and thinking that maybe we could have a couple of something for the children to do while their parents are talking with the school committee members. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, it could be anything from coloring the new modulars to um, Assistant a superintendent big mural doing magic or, tricks. Excuse me? <laughs> Assistant superintendent doing magic tricks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
He does them all the time, right? Wait, we can get some cool planes from his wife. Or some little games um, that could be thought about. Okay. <coughs> Anyone? No, I, I, I think it's a nice idea. I'm, you know, I, I, do you maybe get a high school student or someone to volunteer to do some face painting, but then will that create a longer line for then, there is, then we won't? There is another booth that's, uh, our cast, I believe, does face painting. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe they're probably close it. by, right? <laughs> sort of close. No. Uh, no, not no, they not. usually further down. Where is this it's on the field? Well, are we, there, go ahead. Are there rules about things like, like if we were to have a water melon? Or something that would bring kid people a what? watermelon, something that's non-allergic, or is, are the rules around food? No, or no way. I'm sorry. I I think uh -huh. that it's so complex with the board of health. I don't think we should engage in food. I'm sorry. I, I mean, I, I think it's a great idea, but it's just There's a lot more to it than that. Yeah, yeah. I think the idea of having an act, some little little activity for the kids to do, which maybe coloring something is good when they're talking or. Might I suggest a package of construction papers and a big box of crayons? It can be that simple. Right. Kids will, that's, that's fine. They can fold it, cut it, color it, rip, rip it, oh, make a paper scissors like that. Now. Maybe some clipboards. Exactly. Make sure they're rounded. No scissors. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to take care of that? Very excited. <laughs> Oh, you! I'm I can work on. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Flint is in charge of it. Well, it's a school committee tent, right? So right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm, yeah. I'm glad to take care of that. If that's okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're in charge. Stickers. So, um, I'm not sure. Uh, it was a short commercial break. And okay. <laughs> so actually, Ma, but you were out Sorry. with one of the things we mm -hmm. <clears throat> talked about having is. Maybe a you know a whiteboard with these blown up so okay. people can see them and ask. We did that. We've done that in the past sure. with other things. Yeah. For here or at the each school? No, it no, no. For friends and friends family. family. For friends and family. Oh, okay. Family. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. So it's something that the in the past the architects have done that. So it's something mm -hmm. to ask. But okay. actually, uh, you know, to that point, uh, you should. Uh, or maybe not you, but the architect or somebody. When once we're done with those, we should have them in the lobby of the of the in those schools. Mm -hmm. so that two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Get three separate mm -hmm. boards for us, and then they'll be able. That's why he's the chairman. Exactly. That's a good idea. Okay. Okay. Um, sure. Okay. <laughs> so um, you have in front of you now the corrected um, forecast as of April 30th, 2015. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, not a lot has changed in the regular ed uh, forecast. Um, it's a little more favorable than it was back on March. Back in March, it was uh, estimated to be about 52,000. Um, favorable now it's at 71,000 and the big the big driver in that change was um, was some uh, unpaid leave of absences for some of our teachers okay. um, that are extending their maternity leave to be unpaid um, at the very top the administrative health services is still being forecasted in a deficit uh, that's still the result of um, uh, a, a number of un, a number of leaves of the staff that we've had to cover with um, substitute nurses. Um, extracurricular athletics are both still pretty consistent. The 169,000, that's what I referred to in the memo, and that was part of the discussion um, that the, the update was going to lead into the discussion about uh, recommending a school committee to authorize a transfer. Um, we would like to um, upgrade our infrastructure um, to purchase a number of arrays for um, middle school and high school to increase the, to upgrade the Wi-Fi capacity in those buildings. Um, this is something I recently learned that, that your Wi-Fi is something that should get upgraded every, and I think it's been seven years since the last time we've done it's, an upgrade. It's, uh, I believe these are now entering eight years old, a lot of these arrays, so yes. 
I think of it back to when I had a modem to connect to the internet, and you know, seven years later, you wouldn't still connect with a modem. So I think that these the technology has improved. So, and we have a p number of pockets of where there's no Wi-Fi in the buildings. So, so or, a couple of things have happened over the last eight years. One is there's been an enormous influx of devices, uh, not not just school department, but with BYOD, um, and. One of the things I didn't realize um, is that every time a student brings in a phone or something like that that's accessing the wireless through BYOD, it stays on. So that increases your capacity load of <coughs> the arrays. And when your arrays don't have that, both the, in, the capacity and the, the latest technology, then what happens is you start getting dead spots in the classrooms. And so we have had some difficulty with that this year. And, We've drilled down, we've brought in uh, Xeris, who's the manufacturer, to take a look at the problem. And that really is what it is. You've got, you've got wireless access points that are now aging out. Um, and you've got an increase in devices. So what this will do is it will, it will restructure re all of the wireless infrastructure at the two middle schools and the high school. And it will build in capacity for future increase so if we've got a teacher that is using technology, and I think of always Kerry Gallagher, if you've got a, a, a classroom that's using a lot of technology at one time, there is capacity to add more radios, which is the smaller pieces of the arrays, um, into that classroom to increase the amount of devices that can be used. So that this, this allows us to increase capacity down the road as well. Yes, this is what. Okay, so um, you're saying that we re we're replacing certain piece of it, the array, the arrays, which are like maybe a hub, yeah, sort of. Yeah, I'm sure they don't have any in here. And then, and then, but that's like also space. saucers, saucers, yeah. space. Okay, but that's also going to allow for then even sort of additional leveraging by adding sort of these radios. Future radio expansion, yeah, future expansion. So they're sort of like repeaters. And yeah, and each radio is a is a different frequency that you can access the wireless. Okay, I know it's. From my own son, I don't know what Chuck's heard from his high schoolers or Linda's heard, but I know that the dead spots are definitely a problem, and yeah. the kids go out in the hall and they get their connection, and then they come back in and hoping that you know they can. Still and, and part of that is because they're now physically located in the hallways. These are now going to put individual arrays in every classroom as well. Mm -hmm. So that that's another reason why we want to do this. Thanks. So is it fair to say that this is an expense we should expect every five, six, seven, eight years? Um, probably close to more seven, eight years. Seven or eight years. Seven, eight years. Seven, eight years so yeah. would this fall under the long-term budgeting plan of having technology replenishment? Yeah. yeah uh, yes. Have to be sort of yeah, it's up. not. It, it's under district-wide technology, which is more infrastructure versus regular day, which is more classroom. The, the classroom instructional technology. Okay. So that's the difference. Actually, th I, w I was going to point that out to you all, that that's why it's in technology, is because it is considered an investment in infrastructure, which, as far as DESE concerns as a technology, what the, the technology that we report in regular day is, is classroom computers, teacher computers that are used to, um, for instruction purposes. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Right, so so when, were you trying to go to the point, though, that it would have been is this part of like more capital planning? Like this, that expense should be in somewhere, somewhere else. My, or my my point is the broader point of the importance of budgeting for um, long-term technology replenishment. This seems like something that now we need to deal with it, but we do know that this is going to come up again in right, seven or eight years. Right. So yeah, yeah. having a, sort of a you're, you're exactly right. A capital plan specifically for technology mm -hmm. is a great idea. And having that ongoing, the, the dream of having the ongoing budget support to every year be upgrading technology so that you're planning for it and you're paying for it as you go. Right. Well, so that we're not getting into a, the, where we are right now with it, right. where we are, you know, we're really hampering the ability for the teachers and students to access yep. the learning mode. Absolutely. I do know that there have been some ongoing conversations about technology and, and the need for upgrade and with the town as well, but should there be a, should this be part of the capital plan or should there be a technology capital plan for not just the school but for the town as well? Because I think they're dealing with some aging infrastructure on their side. Yep. So. Interesting. So, sorry, does that, word, it's a, we're taking $170,000 out of the special education? Uh, so where does that leave that? 
Uh, and why is that that much higher? Um, <coughs> we've had a number of students that either have not gone out of district that we thought were going to go out of the district, or um, we haven't settled with families on a number of cases. And at this point in the school year, it doesn't look like we will before the end of the fiscal year. Um, this still leaves room for us to prepay uh, a number of tuitions. We've also had um, a few turnovers in the special ed department where we haven't filled the position and we've used um, either, um, I don't want to say consultant because it's not consulting. Um, we've filled the gap with either substitutes or, or um, outsourcing like some of the testing. Um, uh, we've used, for lack of a better word, a consultant to do some of the, the testing. So there have been some other savings that have happened in the special ed that allow for this, um, this budget transfer. Yes. Mr. Chair, I move to authorize the transfer of $170,000 from the Special Education Cost Center to the Technology Cost Center. That's for a second. second. Any other discussion? I think it's a good expenditure. Yep. All those in favor? 6 0. Thank you, Martha. Thank you. Uh, so, I guess the, we finished our discussion on friends and family day for this at this point uh, we should probably have it up you know we'll have an updated discussion it's still a ways what's it about a month away now? yes we, we figured we'd do this tonight the same with the RCTV so yeah it was kind of the same theme so okay so we can talk about the RCTV community night now uh, this is uh, Chris had signed this us up for this. <laughs> I'm like, don't look at me. This one isn't me. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. Uh, but this is, uh, as I understand it, kind of it's a I, I call it a five minute infomercial on on the school department and and all other organizations. Right. Anybody that signs up, and you know, I think that, and I talked to Jean about it today. Uh, I think that. You know that we should utilize that five minutes to, uh, you know, talk about what we do. Uh, uh, you know, budget, budget, uh, policy making, uh, hiring, superintendent. Those, what, what? I mean, well, I, I, so I open that up for this. If anyone else has any sense. other thoughts uh, on that, anything else? Contract. We do the con contract, con contract negotiations. Um, yes. It might be good to talk about open meeting rules so that people understand better that we are meeting here and we are not meeting elsewhere when we're not on right. camera unless it's executive session. Yeah, I think that's good. Yes. Speaking of which, do we need to post that for Wednesday night if we'll all be in the same place? No, no, uh, we don't, for, well, first of all, it's only five minutes. So I, I remember when you uh, were a candidate and you had to give your candidate statement and you read the teleprompter, it would be a similar, I assume a similar format That's my understanding, that. yes. So, uh, you know, with the permission of the committee, I asked if Jean could, could do that for us. Sounds great. Uh, yeah, you would only, you, you would have to, uh, well, I you can't post my, now anyway. Down. I yeah. third it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first I'm hearing of a No, if someone else, want, if someone her, else wants her to join meeting. her, yeah, you'd have to, uh, you'd have to have that's fine, but, but not the whole committee. I thought it was committee. all of us. No. Uh, so if someone else wants to, to join her, uh, the, to, you know, to give uh, different sections of the, of the five minutes, only five minutes, so. Uh, I think that's a great idea, Chuck. If, if whoever would like to represent, and then we, you could each kind of take a, your own, you know, piece of the puzzle. I think, but I, I think it has to be written by, I think we should be cognizant of it, so I don't know if Jean was ending up, if these are the ideas, and then someone's just going to write, you know, one or two sentences about each of these. I think it's important that we all, you know, that, that it's, that's solid. And if more than one committee member shows up, then maybe you just want to split up sort of 
you know, reading that or, you know, talking to those pieces. But it's very easy in casual conversation to go way beyond that. So those, it's important, I think, to probably have it mostly written down. Yes. I'll, I, I can caucus with Jean on mm -hmm. those topics. And, but, you know, if any, is anyone else? I, I cannot be there, so. Yeah. Either can I. Yeah. I'll be away. Uh, and I can be there. You know, if you, if you need a second person, I can definitely be there. Um, the only other topics I can think of is that we do have we do have student representation on mm -hmm. it, so we do have a connection to the schools and what's going on, and that um, you know from time to time there are presentations from our, our administrators and, and our talented teacher staff Training that is a way to connect with each school. Right, I think that, that's important that we was. we're setting policy, but one of the <coughs> things that's really important to us in setting policy is getting those um, the presentations on different programs, curriculum aspects, you know, new ideas. Um, we get some of the, we approve all the important, we approve all the field trips that the <laughs> district does, which that gives, you know, that is one way that we get to hear about, you know, what kinds of things are going on um, in the, throughout the entire district. So it may sound like a small thing. Um, we also get to be part of uh, graduation, which is the culmination of something that starts at RISE and ends at RMHS graduation day for our students. So, um, you know, I think those are, that's probably the singular most exciting event for a school committee member. I think I'll, I'd also add um, just information about public input at the start of every meeting and office hours. Mm -hmm. So the, mm -hmm. the, the sort of institutional opportunities for anyone in the community who wants to speak to the school committee, there are opportunities for that. I'll jot that down as well. Gary's had his hand raised. I had that Julie and I just went through the school committee training, and actually, there's some really good blurbs, right? And you probably have that book, so I'd recommend Student going through that. There's some pretty much everything you've said. It's pretty much laid out in that in that uh, binder. That's great. Mm -hmm. And then one other question: When is graduation? June um, seventh. Seven. Seven. June seventh. Right, you at uh, one. You and I will talk. To Absolutely. Sunday. June, June, June 7th. 7th. It's a Sunday. 1 o'clock. Um, so yes. um, Ms. Borowski just mentioned the invitation for input, for community input. It's important, I think, to mention, too, that when the input comes, the answer might not be that same day because the intent is to really make sure the answer is appropriate and committee-owned accurate so that the answers to questions won't necessarily come to the same come the same day but they will come um, might I suggest I know you're doing all the writing and the working but maybe if you had kind of a working draft that you could then share with us that no we that's a violation of open the meeting law. law that would be a deliberation yeah. Yeah. okay so all right thank you just one more thing. I yeah. mean, along the lines of communications, I think the website, letting, making sure that people know, you know, what, what information at the website. I actually recently got a question from someone at the Collins Center at a dance performance about how do they find out where to get information about the school committee. And I just basically said, well, you know, you can, you can come to office hours, you can have public, I, so just sort of laying those things out so that people know. And the person didn't, wasn't aware that we had a website or that we had all kinds of our meeting minutes and information and oh yes I remembered what I wanted to say the other thing is the access that once the meeting that the meetings are televised and also that they can access them on YouTube anytime that they want to even if it's talk fast. not during that during meeting time if they want to follow up want to see what's been asked or what's been said that it is at their at their fingertips And our, Thanks to RCTV. Our, our uh, web, our, excuse me, our email addresses are, are now on the town website. Yes, correct? they are. Well, I, I haven't gone and looked, but we've gave, I gave the town manager the information. I got an email from a resident suggesting that because they didn't have students in the school system, they didn't know to go to Edline, so we have them on the town website now. On our, or we're going to, I should right. say. 
on the school committee web page. Yes. Does the town web page have a link? To, doesn't I know like for Ricasa you have the link. It does have a link to the yeah. to the schools to the headline page. Oh, okay. It does. Anything else on that? Mm -hmm. Yes. I have a question. Um, and I'm thinking actually about town day as well as this. Would it be helpful? I hesitate to say this because I suspect it, it's just awkward to say that. But we're all Reading residents. We're all around. Um, would it be helpful to have our pictures with our our emails um, so that people know who they're talking to? To sort of bring it down to a more um, in we're formal but we're also just to engage so we don't seem so separate just to enable people to communicate with us easier where did, where would you post the pictures so actually i was thinking town day if at our booth we had our pictures with our name and email because only some of us are going to be there at a time if we're on shifts um and then I don't know if we want to do it on the website or not. I don't think you can do it on the website unless on the page you actually have a picture of all of you instead of the little red schoolhouse that's there now. Just so thought. you could have a picture of all of you, and actually I think we have a picture of all of you with the Arcasa check. Um, but we could have a picture of all of you and then have the captioning. Julie. Oh, Julie, that's right. Julie wasn't there. So you have to you would have to do a put my name Photoshop her in. Photoshop. But, Photoshop but we, we, we don't have, head on Chris we don't, wouldn't have the ability on Edline to have your picture next to the email address. That's okay too. They don't Just do that for staff, do they? It's not for staff. What's that? That's not done for the staff, I don't think, is it? I've i I've never seen that on Edline. What? Pictures with the emails. No, I don't think oh. you can. I don't think we can talk about that off. Uh, <coughs> so now we have some donations or I think we have a award contract. Of a contract. Award. Yeah. Martha. Me <laughs> um, So this is the uh, the recommendation for the award for the contract for the Eaton roof replacement. And the associated work is the um, the masonry work and some uh, repair work that's going to be done at the Parker Middle School. So what we um, when we started this process, we have two capital lines in the FY15 capital budget. One was for the Eaton roof replacement. The other one was for the Parker roof replacement over the multi-purpose room. And um, <clears throat> when we went out to bid for the design services, which this committee awarded to Gail. Um, a little more than a month, back in the month of February was when we awarded the contract to Gail. Through our subsequent conversations with them, talking with them about what we were going to be doing at Parker, it became apparent to us that combining the two would save us some, some money mm -hmm. and, um, and it would potentially help us get a better bid because you're building up the project. And so the masonry work that was at Eaton wouldn't necessarily be attractive to a bidder, but now if you combine it with the work at Parker, it is. Um, and so the results that you're seeing on the memo from Gail are the, um, the, the, the bidders that were uh, responsive and responsible. So responsive means that they did all the paperwork correctly, they provided their, um, their bid bonds, um, all the other certifications that they have to provide us, their DCAM certifications, that paperwork was provided. And then responsible means um, they are a good vendor, that their references checked out and, and that sort of thing so um, by law we have to go with the lowest bidder who is deemed responsive and responsible and in this case it is re reliable roofing um, and Gail has done a number of projects with them and they they do they are reliable so um, so we look forward to uh, to working with them at Eaton and uh, and at Parker Yes, Mr. Mr. Chair, move to authorize the superintendent to enter into contract with reliable roofing and sheet metal for the Joshua Eaton roof replacement and associated work. Her second. Second. Martha, do we have a do we have a contractor on under retainer, a roofing contractor under retainer that fixes 
uh, like we have for plumbing and we do so we have a number of those um, for the roofing I believe it's specialized roofing is who but, we have yeah. um, that's for minor roof repairs not for uh, for like a capital project like this we would go out to bid we also have NJS um, masonry on on contract for minor masonry repair projects but something like this would go out in a, in a bid so special or they didn't even bid um, they did not they might not that Probably not that, they're not that big. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. I do have just a, I, I, by law, we have to go with the lowest bidder. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm sorry, is that town law, state law? <laughs> state law. State okay. Law. Mass General Law 149. Okay. The reason why I just, because I know you said they're reliable, but one of the things that struck me when I was reading through this earlier today was, in general, their reference checks were favorable. So am I just reading that? No, I, th I think where, where there were some um, uh, hiccups for them, if you will, is, is paperwork. And all contractors are notoriously not the best at keeping paperwork. That's part of the role that Gail is going to provide for us, is some contract, some, some oversight management. That's part of the agreement we have with Gail. So I fully expect them to, to stay on top of that for us. Okay. Any other questions? All those in favor of the motion, 6-0. And we have some donations. Thank you, Martha. Oh, you're welcome. Yes, Mr. Chair, move to accept the donation from the Friends of Reading Rockets Hockey in the amount of $500 to be used to support a coaching assistant. Is there a second? Second. second. Any questions? All those in favor? 6-0. Good catch. Mr. Chair, move to accept the donation from Reading Lacrosse in the amount of $4,500 to be used to support coaching assistance for the 2015 season. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? All those in favor? 6 0. Mr. Chair, move to accept the donation from the Reading PSST. Um, Parent Supporting Student Theater in the amount of $1,300 to be used to support the playwriting instructor as part of the RMHS drama program. Second. Second. Yeah, I just wanted to say about all of them, I figured I'd combine it. Just a thank you to the parents that um, raised the money for these donations and then enable the schools to offer us the quality programs that we can with the assistance that we couldn't otherwise and the, um, the playwriting instructor that offers a whole nother outlet and genre for our kids to study and without the parents and the volunteers, we couldn't do that. So I just wanted to say a bulk thank you. Thank you. An acknowledgement of that. All those in favor of the motion? Six zero. Uh, now we'll uh, do reports. Uh, Mr. Gillies. Um, so uh, the high school seniors have seven days of school left. So the uh, case of the senioritis has <laughs> skyrocketed. <laughs> and, uh, last week they, they were all rollerbladed before school and then all the teachers had to really yell at them to get their rollerblades off before first period. Um, they had like a lightsaber fight. Um, nothing destructive towards like learning or anything, so it's all been good. Um, the lacrosse team is still undefeated, so that's great for them. Uh, tomorrow at 6.30 in the, um, the pack, I believe they'll be inducting kids into the NHS, the Century Club, and recipients of a book award, so that's just something happening at Reading right now. Great. <coughs> Good job. Any committee reports? Docs? I have a couple. Um, this Thursday will also be the Spring Into Song concert by the Choral Department. Um, at 7 o'clock, it's free. Um, at the Performing Arts Center. And this Friday will be um, a celebration of the 30th, I think it's the 30th anniversary of Understanding Disabilities. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And you can check out their website for that. It's very exciting. I wanted to mention how wonderful the Reading Education Foundation Imagination Celebration was 
last Saturday night, it was really inspiring. Um, they're creative even in their celebrations and they're continuing to raise money for our schools, which enable teachers to do things otherwise not possible, including having a 3D printer that was on display at that meeting, I mean at that event, which was really <coughs> incredible, and the investment of the teachers that researched it and applied for it, and then followed through despite hiccups in making it work for their programs and their kids. And then an update on the Human Relations Advisory Committee we just met last Thursday, and we've turned our discussions to the sunset clause that's written in. So as of June, I think it's 30th, um, a number of committees will sunset unless we are reapproved by or reinstated by the selectmen. And so we have actually a draft done, but we are submitting a request to the selectmen to reapprove our committee for another period of time. And in the process, we are going to um, raise our efforts to solicit other people who want to volunteer with our committee, whether they want to be a sworn-in member or they'd like to be an associate member. Town meeting just approved a way that associate members can sometimes be um, included in discussion and voting if a member is not there. So that eases the quorum restrictions so that we can keep the momentum of our work going. Um, and we're also in the future going to be discussing the pros and cons of whether we should stay a public committee or whether we should go private. So um, anybody with expertise related to that is welcome to come to our meetings. They're open meetings. They're the first Thursday of every month at 7 o'clock now, not 7.30, 7 o'clock at the police station unless otherwise posted. Thank you. So what would, sorry, I've asked a question. What no. would be the advantage going private versus public? We're discussing those pros and cons. So um, being a public committee right now, we have open meeting laws. And one part of our mission is for people to feel comfortable to come to us with concerns. And so if you are an open meeting and people come forward with concerns and we have um, a police, the deputy chief is a member of our police. He's also a mandated reporter. So sometimes that could be a conflict of interest if someone just wants to come to share a concern they have and aren't quite sure how they want to deal with it yet or how to triage it. So that's a complication. One of the, um, of the open meeting law and one of the complications of going private is that right now as a part of the town, we are fortunate to have use of the schools for the Martin Luther King Day event. Mm -hmm. Our meetings every month, um, we would need to establish 501c3 status. We would need to become a, fi a fundraising mm -hmm. body. Um, the benefits of either way um, are that we really want to bridge with other organizations in the community, so we have to need we have to figure out how to do that, what the best way is. Um, we were approached by a group from the UU Church, Race Matters, and we're very excited that we were approached by another group from the town, and we really are looking to collaborate and broaden our, our um, reach. We also were approached by the library to do a Frederick Douglass event, which we are planning to do. We're just figuring out how, when, where, um, and that's all what we want to start, but we're not quite sure um, w how to weigh the challenges to either private or public. Right now we're an advisory committee to the selectmen, so we are public. Um, the Winchester Multicultural Network is a private organization, and I have a meeting with their um, chair, their, actually their director, who is a hired director, fundraising. Um, so we just need to educate ourselves and welcome any input from people that might have experience with this. Thank you. Yes, Ms. I just want to add um, thanks to, special thanks to John and his staff and teachers um, for uh, attending. Not only were teachers there um, to show their grants in action, but there was a whole lot of the staff there attending 
um, partaking in the event, and it was great to be able to interact with uh, a lot of the teachers, some teachers I don't get to see too often anymore. And uh, so, but a great, uh, really, turnout uh, from the district and the district staff. So, thank you. Yes. Sorry, and just on that note, a, a reminder about the, the opportunity to do teacher tributes through REF and our PTOs. If there's a teacher you'd like to acknowledge, then you can do that through the REF website. And one more thing. I, I, uh, I attended the high school session, the forum. The forum, yes. Which I just want to say I thought uh, that, first of all, the, it was PTO meeting. They did a very nice acknowledgement of uh, Mr. Scarpito. And uh, so that was a nice piece of it. And that Adam did a really great job, I thought. I haven't been to many of the PTO meetings. A great job sort of uh, you know, opening up that meeting and talking about sort of directions for the high school and what they're going to focus on sort of you know, over the summer and, and get um, parents' involvement. And I thought that that was extremely well re received. And then uh, John uh, presented the four questions uh, and uh, had a lot of dialogue. There were several teachers that were in attendance to just, I think, observe the um, dialogue. And uh, so I'm sure there's a lot of good input. And you've probably had a couple of other sessions since then already. Or no, we haven't. No, not yet? Um, okay. We have one. No, we don't have any this week. Yeah, next week. Um, we are concurrently running staff sessions as well. Oh, great. So we have, we have had a staff session. So I think, Linda, you were there too. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty well attended. Yep. But um, it was whether it was... Um, very one-sided gender-wise, uh, there was mostly mothers, mostly uh, female parents. Um, so it was, but it, I, it was, uh, you know, well attended. I think there was about 20, was there about 20 or 25 people there? It was closer to 40. Yeah, I would say really? it was more than that. Yeah. All right, it was big. <laughs> there was a lot of people. It's good. Yes. It was really nice to take part in it, too, because it was a good mix of positive and constructive feedback. It felt really good to feel like people felt comfortable being honest in their feedback, and and there was um, I just, there was both positive and constructive suggestions, which I think was really helpful. I enjoyed hearing it and participating in it. Thank you. The other reports. We have minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't. I do not have any report this evening. I'm good. Uh, we have minutes. Do you move to approve the open session minutes dated April 28, 2015? For a second. Second. Any comments on the minutes? I missed the meeting. All those in favor? <laughs> Six zero. So we have a motion uh, to enter into executive session. And not to return. Right. Okay. Mr. Chair, move to enter into the executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation and approval of minutes and not to return to open session. This is a roll call <coughs> vote. Uh, Mr. Nyan. Uh, yes. Ms. Joyce. Yes. Sparowski. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Yes. Mrs. Doctor. Mrs. Webb. Yes. Thanks, Carl.